Hi everyone, it's Gary. Welcome to the weekend update. I thought I'd just start out by looking at Euro Dollar. Uh, we were talking about Euro Dollar and saying it needed to break 135.05 being the low of last week, and it certainly did that on Friday. Um, so that's uh, good news from the point of view of the shorts. If you see here during the week, this being a daily graph, we put in a couple of doji candles and um, that's often an indication that there's a change in the offing, that the change in direction or change in sentiment uh, because there's a, the battle between the bulls and the bears simply doesn't get won either way. Um, and, you know, over over the course of a number of days, in this case, uh, having had this large bullish engulfing candle, uh, we then didn't know what to do with it. Uh, so this is up here is the 138.95. Uh, that we touched in December, um, being the uh, the lower top, uh, which is now uh, really uh, the new lower top would be by 137.40, being the high of last week. Uh, so just to give you an idea on a weekly graph, and just to go back uh, a little bit in history, uh, because uh, this is the this is the descending series of lower highs uh, all the way back to 2008. And if I draw my line, and it's what that's where we touched in December, December the week ending December 22nd. So now that we've broken 135.05, uh, we uh, have this lower top now by 137.40, um, lower lower again than the 138.95, and uh, our target being 132.95 now on the low side. Uh, followed by you know another lower high and another lower low and so on and this trend um, is projected to continue now as it has been doing since 2008 and um, the lower end of this range really is in around the 120s that we touched in 2010 and 2013 and I suppose we got close in 2008 uh, so we can see we're forming this triangle but that's way way into the future um, 132.95 is the immediate target I suppose to the um, to the downside and uh, only above 137.40 you give reason for pause uh, but the um, the dollar strength story does seem to be intact uh, so speaking of the dollar strength story uh, we look at dollar yen again which was also very interesting last week and um, if I can get that here we are so yeah also very interesting last week there's our large push up towards the end of 2012 into 2013 followed by our flag or pennant uh, in for which took took most of 2013 to form and uh, then projecting from this large up move in 2012 to 2013 we project again upwards to, to uh, 110 to 112 uh, dollar yen uh, we liked that idea we were looking at it back in december but we were waiting for this pull in because we didn't like this 500 pip upside but potentially a 500 pip downside as well so now we're coming down into this uh, triangular resistance turn support and also if you see um, on a daily chart uh, we're at the 200 period moving average as well um, which held in October twice and in November and here we are again now um, so uh, that's dollar yen and uh, let me have a look at uh, we look at Aussie uh, New Zealand dollar as well actually I'll do you know what I'll start looking at dollar CAD first uh, because that had a big move too and uh, here's the daily chart uh, this is the this is Friday's price action uh, up uh, past uh, it kissed 112 and up through it really um, into 112 uh, 20 23 to 25 uh, just after GDP numbers at 130 uh, uh, GMT on Friday and then we push lower and it would have been much more useful from the point of view of the bears for example. Um, if we had uh, finished on a shooting star candle with the body of the candle uh, being here with almost no shadow or no shadow at all it has certainly set ourselves up for uh, a, maybe a, a more of a move to the downside or at least give us more conviction it is still technically overbought 71 even after friday's price action 71 rsi uh, there is likely to be more of a pullback in the in the course of the the, the, the coming days uh, i probably won't try and short that I'll, I'll i'll let you know on twitter if i am but um you know it really is against the trend the trend is for dollar strength and for canadian weakness and for commodity currencies of all types uh weakness uh, we talked about um um the uh, new zealand dollar during the week for example and um 
uh, the Aussie dollar, which is weakening significantly and has done. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I did play this on Friday, but not through this instrument. In fact, um, I went long uh, CAD CHF, long uh, CAD Swiss. And uh, as you can see, we had this nice little move on Friday, which I took profits on and booked them. So, um, you know, it is it is seriously against the trend. The trend is for Canadian dollar weakness. But I like the idea of exploiting the Swiss franc strength because of the uh, the risky period that we're in and this, how the Swiss franc has strengthened already and perhaps was overdue a little bit of weakness, uh, a little bit of weakness, uh, plus the Canadian uh, dollar being so grossly um, um, sold over the last um, couple of weeks, really, and was, uh, you know, on daily studies, um, very, very uh, overbought, for example, and dollar dollar Swiss franc, dollar uh, CAD, uh, that, you know, the, I thought the loonie was due for a little bit of uh, strength. And that was a way to play this, uh, both the Swiss franc story and the Canadian dollar story. Uh, plus, of course, we were just coming off uh, RSI 30 on this um, market itself on, on, on CAD CHF. Uh, so that is Canadian um, and, and that's what's been happening there. And we'll have more of that next week. I'm sure there'll be a lot more uh, opportunities to make some money on the Canadian dollar um, next week or the commodity currencies, uh, specifically um, uh, New Zealand dollar, I think. Uh, there might be some good opportunities next week. And the other thing I suppose I wanted to show you as well, which I'm still long and it's in, it's making money, is the um, uh, Aussie dollar, New Zealand dollar. It's up at 108.17 there now. Um, I'm looking for, if we take this time frame to a weekly, I'm looking for a move above 108.60, uh, which would be a nice uh, move, and it would take out this candle, uh, the candle ending January 12th, uh, for another push higher. Um, I like this story because the Aussie uh, dollar has weakened so much now over the past couple of months, and the uh, New Zealand dollar, which is also a commodity currency, has not. And um, uh, that, I think, is well overdue now, uh, some weaker um, uh, price action. And uh, as you can see, uh, from a technical point of view, uh, we've been down in the 104 to 106 since 1996, 2003, 2005, 2006, 2009. And every time it goes down here, or at least up to now, it has rallied three, four, five hundred 500 points, sometimes 1,000 pips, sometimes, as you can see here and here, 3,000 pips, so and, and more. So, you know, I think it's a compelling uh, setup. Uh, that's why I'm long. Um, I think there's much more money to be made in this, and um, you know, I, I'm, you'd be looking. Re I think any reasonable person would be looking for 112 to 113, uh, perhaps more. That's almost the minimum of what we've done on any of these other occasions where we've been down here. Uh, so look, that's the weekend update. I'm not going to go into the depth uh, that I would during the week, uh, but I do hope uh, you have all had a good January, and um, and a profitable one. And uh, let's uh, see if we can uh, do even better in February. Um, that is it. Uh, take care and be careful.